Great to have you there. HBZ 840 Workstation. One beast of a machine. Now, what are we up to today? Well, the title gave you a very clear indication. We're installing extra RAM. And you're saying, why would you want to install extra RAM? How much did it have to begin with? Why are we even upgrading to what appears to be a tremendous amount of RAM? And uh, you're absolutely correct in all those questions. I have the same questions myself. Why am I upgrading my RAM? Let me give you some insight. So, I was doing video editing and 64 gig that was in there managed to not become adequate. What is the end result? Why well, your software begins to crash. Uh, so it's just not ideal for what I was doing. Now do you need more than something like 64 gig of RAM on this particular system that maybe you aren't doing video editing on? I'm going to say no, because believe me, it's crazy when you upgrade your RAM. Not to mention the power draw that these uh, bad boys are going to soak up, but that's sort of the price of uh, pushing the video editing front. So right now, trying to remove those existing DIMMs, yes they are rather well populated. You'll notice half of the current uh, memory slots there are occupied. And there's our first candidate. So what do I have in here? Well, they were DDR4 and 8 gig DIMMs. You'll notice the speed rating there, 21 33 megahertz, so not the quickest RAM that's available for this machine. In fact, you could step it up at least a couple of tiers. I think around 2600 megahertz is the maximum speed. Uh, that does, however, require you to empty out your bank balance, which was not something I was willing to do on this occasion. Just not worth it. So I went for the slowest RAM I could find and found a pretty affordable bundle. Definitely want to keep an eye out for sales. You don't want to be buying this at what I would say is sort of the market price that's not cheap. So reasons for upgrading your RAM, is it even worth considering? Well it's only worth doing if you're pushing your video editing front. So if you find you're running out of memory, absolutely consider it. I'd say upgrading the speed might be more beneficial than just sheer volume. Now right now, aiming for 256, do I think that is excessive? Yes, I think that's excessive. I really don't think I'll ever need to use that much. In fact, I may remove half of it. But for now, we'll put it into the full uh, load. There's the uh, new example there. So 16 gig DIMM, you'll notice they're fully populated. The only way to get more capacity on there now would be to enlarge uh, the actual chips themselves. So full 16 gig per DIMM. This is going to be intense. Now, for alignment, you want to keep an eye on the little tab I'm sure you knew that already, but very important detail on these HP workstations. You want to make sure you align it well. Now, as an added little bonus, on the side cover for the HPZ, you will notice some very clear instructions on how to correctly install these memory modules. You want to keep an eye on that because they're very pedantic. These machines have very specific criteria. You can't just put the memory into any slot as you may like. So definitely check those configurations. They also make recommendations there for the most optimal arrangement of how to actually populate these DIM slots as well. So right now going for what is meant to be an optimal configuration, which is basically just filling all of them with as much memory as you can get your hands on. Pretty solid strategy, I hope. So gonna try and put this all together. Fingers crossed I get a good outcome and that the memory upgrade really serves me well in terms of video editing. Now we'll let this run through, it does take a little bit of time if you're not in the mood for a bit of scenery, uh, checking out the full installation process, feel free to skip ahead to another part of the video, but for now, very very delicate process, I'll try and narrate as much as I can, oh, I'll check a little peek there, nice touch. So very important, when it comes to removal of these stems and even refitment, I have found very very easily a few sort of apply full force on one of those little tabs off on the sides of the DIMMs, there's a high chance that your RAM will projectile out of the socket. That's not optimal at all, you want to avoid this. You'll notice when I do release the RAM, I do use a second hand to try and shield and basically protect from uh, the RAM module popping out. I had that at least once, not good when it pops out. You know what I mean. Okay, so. There goes the modules, excellent. So really important, you wanna hold on to those, make sure that they don't fly off and damage components on your motherboard. 
Okay, excellent. There goes the next one. Uh, delicate, delicate process. Really having to pull out all the stops, trying to dodge the camera while also managing to install uh, those chipsets. Okay, it's looking good. Well done. Okay, so we have one full set, slowly populating the second half. Making good progress. That's uh, 35% through, not bad. So, in case you're wondering, uh, why a helmet while working on what is to be, I guess, computer hardware? Uh, it's really important actually, it helps to pre prevent any hairs from perhaps falling into your open case. Uh, if it's a really hot day and uh, maybe you're breaking a sweat from the hard work that is moving these heavy modules around, uh, you don't want to break sweat over your machine. So again, just generally a safer thing to do. I'd absolutely uh, recommend wearing a helmet when working on your computer, but maybe that's just me. Also helps to dim out those bright lights out there because, you know, it's kind of bright. Do what you gotta do. Awesome. Okay, we're halfway through already. This is going really, really well. Oh, super speed there. Excellent. If only I could work that fast all the time. Okay, so again, looking for those markings. You'll notice the markings are separate between the two sides. So you do want to try and keep track of that as well when you're installing these. Uh, some nice camera work there. It's all right, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the right angle. Really, really tough. And uh, it doesn't help having that cable. So that random cable floating around there, I know it's suboptimal, but that is the only option I have for powering my USB 3.0 adapter, or technically a 3.1 adapter. Oh, uh, super speed, look at that. Yeah, definitely need a bit more of that super speed stuff, that's awesome. Okay, we'll just quickly fly through, let's hammer these out. Absolute pro working at this kind of speed, not something you see normally. Oh, uh, look at that, precision, absolute precision. Now, very important when you insert these, apply a little bit of force on both corners. You want to make sure that it has seated in a very sort of traditional and standard manner. Okay, looks like we're on to the last one there. Notice how I'm pressing down in the middle as well, making sure that the pad doesn't sort of, let's say, pop or uh, jump its way out of the socket. Oh, showing off. That's just showing off. Sorry, guys. I, I really shouldn't show off like that. That's okay. Wait for the old uh, double removal technique. That's very, very useful. Just don't drop it. That's high risk. Okay, so there it is. One last look before these go in and start doing some really hard work creating this very video for you guys. And guys, that's looking pretty tidy. Definitely keep an eye out for perhaps some sales. Uh, these particular one I got on local auctions, really a good way of getting your hands on some of these awesome, awesome cards. Okay, very delicate. Nice to see the lighting improve a little bit. I thought you guys might approve a slightly better look of what's happening. So really good look at the motherboard there. And uh, very, very delicate installation. Take note of the pressure points. Awesome, yep. So definitely focus on the corners and towards the middle as well. Very important, aligning all of those details. Okay, that's looking really good. Oh, we're on to the last one. Can you believe it? That goes so quick. Lucky last. Now, I would go for the last one, but surely we should take a quick pause. That's worthy of a pause. Let's have a look at this. One last comparison. So on the left here, the original memory on the right. Well, I guess they're both the original memory. Theoretically, they're the same speed, but slightly bigger capacity. Definitely take a look at those. Doubling up on the memory chips very well populated cards now definitely not a cheap memory upgrade you want to select these very very carefully but that's a very nice comparison there awesome thanks for that let's continue let's get this done i would go for single-handed but that might be dangerous we'll go double okay very nice blurry action there but we get the idea okay now you you're thinking you're done but you're not done yet. Here's my signature move. I call it the RAM seating process. You go through every single module and tap on each corner. 
with a light but firm pressure. Now you're wondering why? Well, it's to avoid what I call the five red lights of, of doom, perhaps. Uh, heavy reference there to the Xbox Red Light of Doom. Uh, very important, just make sure if there was perhaps one that didn't seat well, you'll get it, no matter what. Awesome. And I can confirm I didn't have a red beep on this one, but in saying that, didn't go smoothly either. We'll see that very shortly. Thank you, HP. Awesome machine. Let's get this done. Now, delicate putting those shrouds back. There is a slider off on your left hand side, but also going to dodge my power cable off on the right hand side and take a look at that GPU clearance. Right there where my hands are is the inlet to what is, I guess, the main CPU for this particular motherboard. And uh, that's just not enough room. So it does tend to run really hot, but there is enough space for some sort of airflow, I think. I haven't actually validated that claim and don't take me up on it. Okay, very delicate on the cables. That looks okay. Now I have noticed at least one of those cables got a little uh, nick in them. It's not all the way through, but that's definitely worthy of a uh, bit of a correction there. I'll look into that. Maybe get a new cable might be better. Remind me on the next one. Hopefully it's not still there on the next video. Yeah, okay, it's looking good. Let's get that cover back on. Oh wow. Oh, that's beautiful tunes. Yeah, definitely give you guys some lessons on how to do that as well. Awesome. Okay, so let's get the cover back on. Oh, that's cheeky again. Very, very cheeky. Very tidy looking case there. Okay, there they are. All the new memory chips in. And now we're just left with some rather neglected 8 gig dims. It's alright, they'll populate another machine. Don't worry, they live on. Okay, excellent. Now let's uh, go for the boot test. So I've got the screen off to the right hand side, you can't see because we're in full stealth mode, but it's been booted up. Now as all good things go, the first time you boot up your HP, it never starts. That's just because we made a modification, I assume they restart. Yeah, that's okay, not, not on the first one. And I really didn't expect it to launch on the first one, to be honest, there's no way. The second one, however, yeah, that also failed, sorry, no, no luck on the second try. I don't know what happened to the RAM. Um, let's try again, we'll go for the third startup. I'm sure the computer loves being switched on and off. Okay, so I don't see anything there, that's really confusing. Um, I don't know where the RAM's gone, I don't know what it's up to. Maybe it's gone to another dimension, perhaps? Is that possible? Can the RAM, like, climb out of the case and go to another dimension, kind of like this? Yeah, maybe. I was beginning to question this. Fourth start. Bit of lightning struck the CPU. I think that's what was needed. Because after that, we had power. Yeah, you don't want to know how many cutscenes that took. Okay, so HP Performance Advisor. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the population of that motherboard. So all the dims are there, correctly detected. Really nice to make sure that's all good to go as well. And while we're here, may just as well scope out the rest. So we got those E5 2660 CPUs, a couple of those. 2070 Super from MSI, the gaming Trio X. And let's test it out. So sorry, that's a little blurry. Couldn't help myself, made it blurry. Uh, but this is the video that I had trouble on. I wanted to get this out somewhere in February already, but 64 gig just wouldn't do it. So, what is this video? Well, this would be NVMe adapter shootout, testing out a 970 EVO on each of those adapters. Stay tuned, hopefully one day we'll get that out. Now, doing some quick benching to check, has the memory made any difference? Not sure, but let's stress it, we'll see how it does. Yeah, that looks pretty quick to me. I'm not gonna complain about that. Now, what's the memory looking like? Oh, memory's pretty mild. CPU's fully, fully clocked. That's excellent. Now, uh, I will mention here, I did run into some slight problems here with temperature. So I didn't quite expect that, but it kept climbing up. And that made me think maybe my thermal pace is out a little bit. We'll look into that in a future video. Okay, so let's test this out. Can I justify the memory installation? Probably not. You'll notice we're on 25. Climbing, 32, 33, 
35, 37, that's not too shabby. So far, not justified, we're not even close. Okay, that's getting close, 55, 57, so we're right on the edge. Press a few buttons in the software and look at that. Instantly justified, I saw 65, do you guys see that? That would have crashed the software earlier. Okay, that's barely justified, but nonetheless, I can now work on this video again. Thank goodness, that was a real pain about being able to upgrade the memory. So, nice conclu conclusion there. Oh, that's much better, that's in focus now too, awesome. So definitely stay tuned for this one, testing out multiple different eBay uh, adapters for your NVMEs, and just doing a quick test run to see which one of those is actually the best value. So far, I've got some data there. I just haven't released it yet. Take it easy. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned for more great content. Don't go anywhere. Have a good one.